in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed someone worship him tonight give him quality things extol his name he's the king of kings the lord of lords alpha omega the beginning and the end the name of the lord the bible declares is a strong tower says the righteous run it to it and they are saved father we bless you to Jesus be all the glory someone is giving God quality thanks tonight let it be from the depth of your heart from the depth of your spirit it's a miracle service tonight an extraordinary encounter with the spirit of grace for in Jesus mighty name we pray in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. i welcome you to a miracle service for the month of february <laughs> hallelujah in the name of jesus all that god has in store for you tonight must be made manifest in your life <laughs> hallelujah so i want you to give your destiny tonight wrapped and dedicated focus hallelujah the bible says they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it the problem was not the word the problem was not even their hearing hallelujah they didn't believe that which they heard and so they did not see anything Tonight we're in for extraordinary times in this place. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so I want you to participate. Every part of the service has a package for you. May you receive your full package tonight. Amen. In Jesus' name. Greet someone by your left and right. Tell them God bless you. Prepare for an extraordinary encounter. Listen to what I told you to say. God bless you. Prepare for an extraordinary encounter. It's too early to be disobedient. God bless you. Prepare for an extraordinary encounter. God bless you. Prepare for an extraordinary encounter. One more person. God bless you. Prepare for an extraordinary encounter. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. I welcome every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church. And every time he gathers us together is to do us good. And he will do you good tonight in Jesus name. I trust God that by the time we're sharing the grace tonight, someone who came here sick will be walking healed and rejoicing someone who came here oppressed with all kinds of spirits and yokes you will watch those chains fall before you in the name of jesus and for people whose destinies have refused to open for whatever reason you will watch those doors fall like dagon before the ark in the name of jesus christ and for someone who has been rejected and you have been denied your portion in this season in the name of Jesus, as you submit yourself to the spirit of grace, suddenly, someone who is responsible for your lifting will be convicted by the spirit to answer you speedily. For someone, somebody who has vowed and said, over my dead body for you to rise. 
The Bible says, who shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. Listen, when God has not instructed a thing, it doesn't matter what men say. Hallelujah. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that power belongeth to God. Not God and men. He gives men, but it is out of what he has. Of his fullness we have received. There is no man who has anything that God did not give. And the one who gave can withdraw it. Did you be... Are, you, are we in agreement on that? There are many people who became arrogant on account of the things that God gave them. And for some of them, he turned them even to animals as a warning that there is only one monarch in this universe. There are many caretakers, including us, but the earth is exclusively the Lord's. And if the owner of that earth has decided to bless you tonight, woe betides any power that stands his way. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm a firm believer in Jesus. I'm a believer in his word. I'm a believer in every provision that is available to the saints in Christ. And I will not rob myself of any opportunity to maximize the blessings of the Lord. Don't choose part of what God can do and leave others. Open up your spirit to receive everything that God has in store for you. Can God heal? Yes, Will you receive it? Yes, Can God lift? Yes, Will you receive it? Yes, Can God deliver? Yes, Will you receive it? Yes, Can God prosper? Yes, Speedily? Yes, Can God prosper? Yes, Can God favor men? Yes, Can God turn around people's stories? Yes, Can God roll shame and reproach for men's lives? Can God restore families? Will he do it for you? Do you believe it? Shout a believing amen. If you truly believe this, then I want you to sit back and brace up because the Spirit of God is on a journey with you today that will only leave you an object of praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Appreciation to all our international guests, people who have traveled from all across the globe. May God bless you. We love you. And for the many who are connected to you, good in Jesus' name. Now, very quickly, we'll have a function here and then we'll go straight to the business of tonight. I made an announcement last week um, that we intend to respond as a responsible ministry um, just to make our own contribution to empower our people and um, it's only responsible of any leadership and any organization to respond to the realities of the time where people of faith but we're also a people of vision hallelujah and so I did tell us that um, we're making commitments to see how we can um, make our own contribution to empower people and we're honored tonight to have for a very brief session, a man that I honor and respect most profoundly. He is a force, mysterious force behind the rising and the sustenance of many by the Spirit in this nation and across the globe. And he's a man who indeed is wearing a coat of many colors. To some, he's a man of God. To some, he's an intellectual par excellence. To some, he's a businessman. To some, he's a leader, a mentor, a father. Any one of these that you call him, you are right. Truly a man wearing a coat of many colors. And um, it's an honor to have him come to give us after a brief media presentation. Maybe for the next 10 or so minutes, he's going to be leading us and guiding us on what to do as to the empowerment program that we want to introduce and then afterwards i'll come back up and we'll be ready to let the devil know that jesus is still king of the universe <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah so after the media presentation which i want you to please pay attention to rapt attention to the media presentation the next voice you'll be hearing will be that of professor john kennedy okara who is a great man of god and also 
the chairman of the CSS group. Thank you very much. His first time here at Koinonia. We honor you, sir, in the name of Jesus Christ. Media, are you ready for us? God bless you. CSS Integrated Farms Limited is one of the most advanced and modern integrated farms in West Africa with a reputation for excellence and creativity. It is the epicentre where innovation meets agriculture. Today we delve into the heart of their operations, specifically their groundbreaking department, the International Skill Acquisition Center, or ISAAC. Join us on a journey of empowerment as we explore how ISAAC is transforming the lives of young individuals through training in modern agricultural techniques, entrepreneurship, and value addition. CSS Farms is constantly improving. Its methods, techniques, and processes to ensure that our facilities and operational procedures meet international standards. It is located in Gora, a few kilometers from the nation's capital, Abuja. Before we dive into Isaac, let's get acquainted with CSS Integrated Farms Limited. Founded with a vision to revolutionize the agricultural landscape, CSS has become a trailblazer in modern farming techniques, sustainability, and community development. With a diverse range of operations, including crop cultivation, livestock rearing and food processing. CSS is a shining example of innovation in agriculture. CSS Farms is into the production and processing of fresh farm produce, such as fresh catfish, fruits and vegetables such as zucchini, seedless cucumbers, sweet melon and many more. With over 100,000 birds and counting, CSS Farms produces over 3,000 crates of eggs every single day, with over 32 ponds and various earthen ponds, the farm produces over 350,000 fish per cycle. CSS Integrated Farms uses greenhouse farming method, which allows for precise control of environmental conditions, temperature, and more leading to increased crop yield. CSS Integrated Farms hydroponics farming method revolutionizes traditional agriculture by growing plants on nutrient-enriched water. By automating labor-intensive tasks, CSS Integrated Farms has increased efficiency, precision, and improved data drive decision making. CSS farms employ advanced water purification technologies by prioritizing natural filtration. By leveraging on the latest automated systems, CSS farms produces rice that meet international standards and customer demand. CSS integrated farms practices vertical integration by cultivating soybeans and processing them into various products this ensures control over the production chain. CSS Integrated Farms prioritizes self-sufficiency, and as a result, the farm eliminates dependency on external suppliers, increases sustainability and profitability. We can also provide customized nutrition for our livestock. CSS Integrated Farms practices farm-to-table approach by producing fruit juice using our own orchard produce. This ensures freshness and quality. Through utilization of automated chicken processing, it offers unique efficiency, food safety, and high-quality chicken products. CSS Integrated Farms is a zero-waste farm, converting reusable materials into paper crates. CSS Integrated Farms is into food processing and packaging of value-added products such as yam flour, plantain flour, rice flour and many more. CSS Integrated Farms cultivates a diverse range of open field crops, allowing for variety of crops. This promotes sustainable agriculture, local economies and consumer satisfaction. 
Let's shift our focus to the heart of CSS Integrated Farms Limited, the International Skill Acquisition Centre. Isaac is dedicated to empowering young individuals by providing them with comprehensive training in modern agricultural techniques, entrepreneurship and value addition. Through their innovative programmes, Isaac aims to bridge the gap between traditional farming practices and cutting-edge methods to create a new generation of agricultural leaders. At Isaac, students are exposed to a wide range of modern agricultural techniques, ensuring they stay at the forefront of innovation. From precision farming and hydroponics to vertical gardening and sustainable pest control, Isaac offers a hands-on learning experience that equips trainees with the skills needed to succeed in the ever-evolving agricultural industry. Isaac understands that knowledge alone is not enough. That's why they emphasize entrepreneurship training alongside agricultural skills. Through workshops and mentorship programs, trainees learn how to identify market opportunities, develop business plans, and navigate the complexities of the agricultural value chain. Isaac ensures that every student is equipped with the necessary entrepreneurial mindset to turn their agricultural dreams into reality. One of the key pillars of Isaac's training is value addition. Trainees are taught how to maximize the potential of agricultural products by processing and adding value to them. Whether it's transforming fruits into juices, dairy products into cheese, or crops into organic fertilizers, Isaac empowers trainees to create innovative and profitable value-added products. The motto of CSS is simple. Excellence is our culture. Creativity is our brand. Passion is our inspiration. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Our Lord is good. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much. Please be seated. My beloved brother, the man that carries double anointing and double grace. Paul the Apostle said in Ephesians 4 7, he said, Grace is given by measure. Sir, I'm really honored to be in this place today. This is the first time, in spite of our relationship, for me to enter here. But one thing he knows, I'm always connected to him up to 4 a.m., praying along with him when I go to the chapel. I am really, really blessed to be here today. Few, few days back, I arrived in California to chair a meeting of the International Businessmen Fellowship uh, 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 meeting. And the people said to me, Please, when are you bringing Apostle back? <laughs> he ministered at the World Convention and they are asking me to bring him back to America to minister at our convention. I said, well, <laughs> to get him is not easy. Sir, thank you very much for this privilege. <laughs> By the grace of God, he has mentioned my name. I serve four presidents in this country. Started with President Obasanjo through to President Buhari before I left government. And in one of the assignments I do, I was nicknamed the number one pilgrimage officer for Nigeria. And because of that privilege, I had to take the president of Nigeria and 14 governors and four deputies, including the senior president now, and so many others to the state of Israel. And we are hosted by my friend, the prime minister, of Israel. In one of those meetings, he said to us, the food Israel will eat in 15 years, we already have. The governors, the president, everybody was clapping. I decided to go to him and I said, Prime Minister, I think you made a mistake. He said, no. John, Israel have conquered food security, sustainability through technology. And if you are interested, we would like to go through with you. 
and that is what gave birth to what I'm about to share in a few minutes. Today, by the mercy of God, it might interest you to know that the only Nigerian president that have gone as a president to the state of Israel was Jonathan, and it was through my instrumentality and by the mercy of God as the head of the pilgrimage commission. Today, I'm going to talk to you about something. Every one of us, we can feel the pain, the pause, food security, sustainability, acute scarcity, inflation, famine, everything you can name it. And we're all lamenting. You can lament from now till Jesus come if you don't do something, nothing changes. Scarcity was what produced prosperity in Egypt. Scarcity was what made Joseph the prime minister of Israel. I mean, Egypt. So whatever scarcity we are facing today, we can conquer it. Let me take you on a journey. Do you know Nigeria, by the mercy of God, is so blessed. God gave us 40 million hectares of land. And we are the highest producer of yam in the whole world. 76% of what the world consumes in terms of yam is produced by Nigeria. Yet, Nigeria is not in the list of 10 exporting nations of yam. What a tragedy. We are doing 65 million metric tons of yam. Ghana is number two. Yet, Ghana is number one in the export of yam in this whole world. Ghana in 2021-2022 earned 38.5 million US dollars from yam export alone. Are you aware that Zakibiam is the largest market of yam in the whole of this world? Yet, Benue don't get one dollar from yam export. What a tragedy. Two, Nigeria is the highest producer of cassava in the whole world. If you look at the chain of nations that export cassava, Thailand, that is number three, is the highest exporter of, of, of cassava. Today, we go to China, buy machines for processing of cassava. What are we doing with cassava? Nothing. And we are lamenting. Why will food not go up? Only three states in Nigeria can feed the whole of Africa. I was speaking at the 31st and 2nd uh, Convocation Lecture of Food Mina, and I said, Niger said is a state with 7.6 million hectares of land. Israel, as a nation, is 23,000 square kilometers of land. That's 2.3 hectares. And Israel, in 2021, earned $16.5 billion from agricultural processing export. And the import, what Israel imported to their country, $3.5 billion. We are shouting, dollar is rising, dollar is rising. Why will it not rise? Once your export value exceeds your import value, what happens? Your dollar will continue to increase. You don't solve a problem by doing nothing. I've come to challenge us today. You saw the video of CSS. I said to them, Every single thing we need, we produce in CSS. We are doing more than 32 products in CSS. We train young men. We train young women. We let them know the future you cannot capture, you can't control. Sorrow and pain was what gave birth to Ruth. Ruth, by the scripture in Ruth, in Ruth chapter 4, verse 22, brought Obed. Obed gave birth to who? Jesse. Jesse brought David. Jesus came from where? The same lineage. So in the midst of this pain and sorrow, we need men and women like Apostle. He has taken a giant land. He said he wants to train between 100 and 200 youth to empower them, expose them in agriculture so that when they come, they will define our country. Every single one of us, are you aware? Do you know Nigeria consumes 4.5 million metric tons of fish every year? And yet we are producing one million metric tons. Every single one of you seated here can grow fish in your house through just small containers. And you are getting money and you are making money. And you are contributing to the national quota. Look, no government alone can solve the problem of its people. But we have to do something. And that's what he has decided to do. To be able to say, let's do something. Do you know... I went to Norway some time ago, and they said to me, look, Nigeria imports 8 million euros worth of fish 
from Norway. Norway is very small, smaller than Abuja. Am I communicating? We have to do something. Otherwise, nothing will happen. So I've come to encourage you and let you know that what he's doing is unusual. And we can start today to see how we can change our mindset. Today, the average woman in the market is counting on dollar. What business do you have with dollar if you are producing what you need? We are chasing shadows. Sir, I really pray that by your step today, many people will come to say, let's key in. We are changing things. We are changing the narratives. People are looking up to us. I was doing a study. Look at, we need, out of the 8 million metric tons of paddy we produce in Nigeria, we consume more than 12 million metric tons of what paddy. Now, let me tell you, Lagos State alone produces about 360 million gallons of water. 25% of that water can give us 80% of what we need. Yet, it's wasted. I told them, Sriro Dam, Sriro Dam give us 700 megawatts of power. What a nest. You should be doing 24 hours farming. Israel, as a nation, experiences one rainfall in a whole year. Yet, they're able to come. 90% of what they get is recycled. In CSS, we have waste to wealth. Every raw material, every waste material, every paper, we convert it to something. We produce paper crate for myth. Every department is a raw material to the other department. And we have target. Yesterday, I sat through with them all through the night. We are looking at our NPR. Every month, every department will decide what you are doing and you give us your result. And if we can begin to empower youth, people, I believe Nigeria will change. There's always a job for any man on top of his profession. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give Prof a big, big God bless you. Just a few minutes charging us. So um, here's what will happen. Our focus now is first on the workforce and then the membership. So we're looking to empower between one to 200 people. Um, Hallelujah. And what will happen is we're partnering with CSS Group. So this is the idea to be able to do a selection. And once we do a selection of one to 200 people, they will train them. When they train them, we'll fund the project. And then they will be able to get something doing. Let's, let's be able to do something about um, the unemployment situation, crying about it, lamenting about it, is an insult to our understanding of vision. We cannot do everything, but like Prof said, we can start something. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? I believe in practical and responsible Christianity, that your spirituality has to translate to a context that speaks to the development of a nation. We're not just blind fanatics without applicability to our serving God. The wisdom that we receive, you fall under the anointing, you rise. That wisdom has to be translated to something. For every of these 200 people now, you imagine with this modern technology, when these 200 people set up their own businesses, if every one of them employs, even if it's 5 to 10 people, you see that now. It's only in Africa that we laugh at farming. Abroad, when they say you are a farmer, it's like saying you are the owner of an oil mine. Is our ignorance in Africa that has made us throw away that which is very valuable. Not everybody has a car. Not everybody may own a home, but everybody eats every day under all conditions. Even if you fast, you will still break. Am I right on that? Okay, so very quickly, so we get this out of the way, Prof, we're honored and thank you very much for uh, the partnership. Um, So they train, he partners with governments of states and nations to train their people, modern agriculture. And I know many of you here um, were hoping to give you a chance to be able to make meaning out of your life. 
to begin to earn, live a responsible life. This, when you receive the knowledge, then the blessing and the anointing becomes valuable. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, so here's what will happen. Um, there are forms that they brought. We're allowing them to handle everything because ethically we separate business from ministry. This is purely empowerment. You are not bringing one naira. You are not bringing one dollar. Everything is my personal commitment to see that. Um, <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And so there are two things. Number one, I hope and pray that all those who will make it will appreciate this sacrifice. And your thank you gift is that you become prosperous and then you are a blessing to others too. If you can help your family by becoming prosperous, that at the end of this year, you'll be smiling and saying, look what God has done. The way prosperity works is through, number one, the blessing of God upon the works of your hands, and number two, strategic relationships. There's no, there's no gimmicks as to how authentic kingdom financing works. God blesses men financially by empowering the works of their hands, if there's nothing in your hand, then there's nothing for God to bless. Number two, if you ignore strategic relationships such as your relationship with the Holy Spirit, your relationship with a ministry like this, your relationship with great men like this, then you don't stand a chance to rise financially. That is the truth. Hallelujah. So, so that we get this out of the way, immediately after the service, there are forms at the PR desk we're only opening up for maybe two, three hundred people. Please don't fight. Don't harass our officials. It's free. Make sure you behave yourself. You're a child of God. I need to say this because believers sometimes become very funny when it has to do with issues of money. You will get the form. Then they will collate everything and do the screening. Those who make it, the hundred or two hundred people um, will be notified. And then uh, they will head for their training. After the trainings, once they are done and we know, we release the funds and then you'll be guided on what to do. It is truly my prayer that God will raise kingdom millionaires even through this platform. You believe that? Yes. I don't believe in poverty. I have zero tolerance for poverty. And I'm not apologizing. I'm not one of those who, there's nothing to say. I hate it. It's not of God. I will never encourage it. You cannot remain like that under this grace. It's impossible. There's, there's nothing to hide. There's, there's no walking around, beating around the bush now. Zero tolerance for poverty. Hallelujah. What we teach people is a kingdom dimension to being blessed in, in the spirit, not to endorse poverty. You can never be a blessing being poor. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So immediately after service, please PR people, you would reach them and then um, we'll be able to get that across to them. So that is phase one. Very quickly, let me announce the second phase of what we're doing. I was discussing with Prof. while we're on our way coming. Um, we want to also be able to support a few businesses here that are already ongoing with proof. Listen carefully. Hallelujah. There are people here who most of the businesses here that between 250,000 to a million naira can make a difference to that business. We're trying to see how uh, with no bias, with no prejudice, uh, of course, uh, looking at the workers and the membership, this is, um, unfortunately, we can't do beyond what we're doing now, but at least it's good that we do something. So, um, for this second group of people, those you know that you are actively in business, not that you are starting, number one, your business must be legitimate, adding value. Legitimate and adding value. I'm informing you now so you don't embarrass yourself legitimate and value adding are we together um and then you are already on and what you just need is to support a little support or to scale immediately after service again so pr protocol you work with pr please so that um we're able to manage them for these you will only write your name your number and your email um for those who will get the form for this professional training in agriculture you will be asked to complete the form and then you submit it tomorrow at our other auditorium, the Daughters of Abraham Auditorium. 
and then we'll collate all the forms. Uh, hopefully, we'll give one week. One week should be enough for that. So please pay attention. From tomorrow up until Friday, we'll give you the liberty to complete the form so that we collate it and we'll send it to the CSS group. They will now do their screening professionally and then they'll announce to those who are qualified for the training and the funding. But this is to be able to support a few. I don't know how many, but there's no promise that just because you wrote your name, you will be supported. Are we together? So that you don't find any offense. We're just doing our bit. So let's see how many people that can cover. And then depending on the kind of business and the kind of support that will make meaning to the business, maybe some 250, some 500, and then Max, you will not cross a million naira just to add something to your business. But before we release, amen. Once we collate the list for this second group, while the first group are having their training, we collate the list. We'll have a one day training, compulsory. You will not get one naira from us if you don't come for that training. The training is free. You have a training and then we'll teach you, share a few things. We'll get professionals to help you on how to do your business effectively. Afterwards, the funds will be released with the blessings of the Lord. And um, I believe that we have no authority to command people to give, to tithe, if we don't take the responsibility to, to bless them. This is not a ministry that looks for millionaires and billionaires. We raise people. The proof of the grace that we carry is that we can raise people. Hallelujah. You believe in what we are doing? So we're going to pray over these projects, one and two. And for all of them, after service, please don't fight. Just join the queue, and I'm sure they will guide you. Those with businesses, scalable businesses, um, you write your name and all of that. Those online, we apologize. We may not be able to cater for those outside of this immediate environment. You will receive anointing. I'll be speaking over your life for those who are here. Blessed are your eyes for they see. Blessed are your hands for they reach. Hallelujah. Hopefully as we grow, we'll be able to reach other regions and do our best for Jesus. I'd like you to pray over this project in one minute. Father, we thank you for an opportunity like this. Someone is praying. Thank you for a partnership with CSS Group and this that you are doing, empowering many, many people over this first phase of empowerment. Thank you because you are raising producers from these people in this nation, raising people into mechanized agriculture, mechanized farming. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that everyone who should be part of this you will cause them to not only be part of it, but raise kingdom millionaires and billionaires out of this project in the name of Jesus. And then we pray for all those who are involved in any and all value-adding platforms. We're praying in the name of Jesus as you have given us the privilege to support them as best as we can. Let it also come with your grace that they will be encouraged and they will rise, they will scale, they will do well in their businesses and their endeavors you have called us to be light you have called us to be salt and we pray that you bless us in jesus mighty name we pray one more time let's appreciate prof thank you so much for the honor sir please be seated please be seated hallelujah May your wisdom be, may, I'm thinking of the best way to say it. May the wisdom of God that is at work in your life be such that everyone around your life can see it visibly. Yeah. If it is true that the wisdom of God is at work in you, I'm praying for you that it will find expression and people will thank God for the gift of you. Yeah. Hallelujah. It was Prof who said, those who live beyond themselves, live beyond their time profound statement hallelujah you must think beyond yourself this is one of the things i'm hoping that we learn for as long as all you have is for you there is only so much you can eat there is only so much you can wear are we together there is only so much you can drive giving is living 
and I'm praying that this would challenge even us servants of the living God to begin to contribute our quota. Let it not be that all we're doing is just collecting, collecting, bring money, bring this. You see, I've told you that when you spend your life empowering people sincerely, it was very easy for people to arise, to stand with you and to support you. People are givers, but they always want to give to noble causes. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Are you ready for tonight? Every prophetic service such as this, every time we're gathered before God, receiving is based on atmospheres. Please listen carefully. Receiving in the spirit is based on the atmospheres that are created. And there essentially in every service, there are at least four atmospheres that allow for receiving. Number one, very quickly, is the atmosphere of praise and worship. In the atmosphere of praise and worship, receiving is easy. Receiving is possible. The atmosphere of praise and worship. Every time you find people praising God, you find people worshiping God, then there is an opportunity for someone to receive any and all spiritual blessings. Are you learning already? Number two, the second atmosphere is the atmosphere of prayer and supplication. Every time the atmosphere of prayer and supplication is created, then the opportunity and the possibility for reception in the spirit is also there. Mark eleven twenty four. What things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray. Mark eleven twenty four. When ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. In the atmosphere of prayer, desires are converted to expectations. Desires are converted to manifestations in the atmosphere of prayer. Are you ready for number three? The third atmosphere that helps believers to receive from God is the atmosphere of the word. When the word is taught, not just when the word is present, the atmosphere of the word, the teaching ministry. Because the teaching of the word imparts understanding and it alters your mindset, it helps you to receive from God. This is very important. I'm defining for you the atmospheres upon which you receive spiritually. Your first assignment is not to desire to receive. Your first assignment is to see to it that these spiritual atmospheres are created. If these atmospheres are not created, like we study in physics and aerodynamics, any plane can fly, but not under every atmosphere. The first assignment of the engineers and all who are involved in flying and aerodynamics is to perpetually simulate the atmosphere that makes for flight. This is how it is too in the spirit. If you can create the atmosphere for praise and worship, then you have created the atmosphere to receive. If you can create an atmosphere for prayer and supplication, then you have created the atmosphere to receive. Number three, if you can create the atmosphere where the word of God is accurately communicated, you have created the atmosphere to receive. Number four, the atmosphere of the prophetic. When you create a prophetic atmosphere where prophetic speakings can come to your life, you have also created the atmosphere to receive. Men receive in atmospheres of praise and worship Men receive in atmospheres of prayer and supplication. Men receive in atmospheres of the word when it is accurately taught, communicated. Men receive in prophetic atmospheres. Let me add one more for your understanding. The final atmosphere, maybe not the final, but at least the last for now, is the atmosphere of giving and thanksgiving. In fact, all kinds of giving. In the atmosphere of giving, there is also receiving. Because the giver, according to scripture, is a sower. And every time you sow according to Genesis 8.22, it says, for as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. Shall not cease. This is a divine verdict. 
So in the atmosphere of sowing, an atmosphere of giving, and I hope you know giving is not just limited to money. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving, gratitude from your heart unto God is a seed you are sowing. It says, let the people praise him and then the earth shall yield her increase. And even God, our God will bless us. So people who seem to always walk in the harvest, people who seem to always walk in divine rewards, they are not just people who are necessarily extraordinary Christians. They have understood the implication of creating spiritual atmospheres. You find out that someone is perpetually being favored. You find out that someone is perpetually walking under open heavens. I can tell you, it's not because God decided to isolate them and bless them at the expense of another. Because the Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. What has happened is that by mentorship or understanding, they have come into the, the, a comprehension of the implication of atmospheres. So for one, through your prayer and praise, you perpetually create an atmosphere, say for instance, of praise and worship. You find people who praise and worship God all the time, they will seldom be without help. God will always raise help for them. Always raise help. At midnight, the Bible says, you see what Paul and Silas did? The Bible says they prayed. They created that atmosphere. Added it with the atmosphere of prayer. And this time around, it was not an angel that came. When, when Peter prayed alone, God did not come. It was an angel that came. But when Paul and Silas prayed and added another atmosphere of praise and worship, God himself came, not an angel. And you see the difference in the way deliverance was done. The angel gently opened the doors. God came and scattered the foundations. Hmm. Hallelujah. Then the Bible tells us that and he, as he taught, the he being Jesus, the power of God was present to heal. Someone's healing was at the mercy of that atmosphere. Once upon a time, the apostle was preaching and there was someone who had been lame, sick, and he looked at him discerning that he had faith to be healed. In the atmosphere where the word of God is taught, the sent word, you see that now? You are able to receive it into your spirit like it is happening to you now. Whilst I'm teaching, you may not even know what is happening to you. But there is an incorruptible seed. You are receiving something. You get up and find out the pain is no longer there. You get up and find out you can throw the crush and walk away. Don't ask how it will happen. Just as you do not know the way of the wind or how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child, so also you cannot know the ways of God. There is an equation to miracles that men cannot explain. We can only explain how the word of God comes to unite with the spirit. But anything beyond that realm is beyond the scope of our intelligence. That one only God can fill that equation. And I have taught you one plus one plus God is equal to the answer he puts there. One plus one is two mathematically. But one plus one plus God. The only person who can answer that is God himself. Hmm. I receive. I manifest. Your power. And your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. I receive, I receive, I manifest, I manifest your power, your power, and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest the prayer, your power. And your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Sing, breathe, Lord, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, Lord, breathe, 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 breathe,
your life be a sign and a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ I'm speaking over you may your life be a sign and a wonder that when men look at you it will be clear that God's hand is upon you it will be clear that God's grace is upon you evident and unmistakable in the name of Jesus Christ listen there is no doubt when God works with men there is no doubt when grace rests upon men there is no doubt when light comes to men there is no doubt when the Spirit of God works with men are we together now I'm preparing your heart for the many things that you are going to receive because there are many of us your life is ordinary I'm telling you you cannot bring glory to God that way the Bible says we are his workmanship Ephesians 2 10 created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should work in them God has preordained there is a preordination I have taught you here and I will repeat myself for your emphasis that God's goal ultimately is not just to take us to heaven but that your life and my life will eventually be a manifestation of the glory of God I reckon it says that the sufferings of this present time Romans 8 18 are not worthy to be compared with the glory the glory that shall be revealed in us the glory that shall be revealed in us the glory that shall be revealed in us what is glory the multifaceted dimensions of God his wisdom is his glory his power is his glory his favor is his glory speed is a manifestation of his glory restoration is an expression of his glory prosperity is an expression of his glory everything that can make God men praise God through you God is willing to make available in your life you have to believe this the Bible says oh that men will praise the Lord for his goodness listen and his marvelous his wonderful works to the children of men there is what God can do to the sons of men that will cause men to praise God it says you turn my morning into dancing my sorrow into joy the Bible says that you will be given beauty for ashes is that in your Bible yes a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness he says that they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified Galatians chapter 1 24 he says and they glorified God in me John 15 8 herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples John 8 16 you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit John 15 my apologies 15 8 and 15 16 15 8 and 15 16 that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain there is a kind of believer that God wants to unveil to creation. There is a kind of Christian that God wants to unveil. You need to understand where God is going with all this journey. Why does he heal? Why does he deliver? Why does he prosper? Why does he restore? There is an intent behind everything God does. Number one, he does it because he loves you. Number two, he does it because of his namesake. Number three, he does it because by supplying those provisions, you become an expression of his glory, a revelation of his power to your world. So don't just receive healings, don't just receive miracles, don't just receive prophecies, don't just receive impartations. You must know that there is an intent. We launched a project here right now and we told you the intent behind it. To empower people as our contribution to nation building, as our contribution to helping people live decent lives. That is the intent. What is the intent of the Spirit of God showing up in this service? Why did he bring you? Why did he bring your family? What does he seek to achieve? Why does he want to heal you now? Why does he want to turn your mourning to dancing, your sorrow to joy? Why does he want to rewrite your story? 
Let me remind you again, number one, because God is love. It is in the character of love to give. Love always looks out for the best interest of men. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13. Paul teaching us on the character of love. He says love is patient, love is kind. Is that true? Love hopes all, it believes all things. If it is true that God is love, then it must be consistent with his nature to see you at your best. Number two, the Bible tells us that he does all that he does for the saints and even for creation for his name's sake as a defense to his reputation. There are things that God does not just because of you. He does them as a defense to his reputation. Hallelujah. I did teach us last week. Sit down, sit down. I did teach us last week that there are car companies, automobile companies across the world and other products, large multinationals and so on and so forth. When there is a default in their product for the sake of their reputation, in fact, they do not even know who their customers are. Hallelujah. They don't know who is the end user. They just know that there are people in Africa, there are people in Europe, and when they find out that there is a default, for their name's sake, they will recall thousands of cars at their expense. That's how men are willing to defend their name. How much more the King of Glory. I worshipped him, sang so beautifully, flaunting his name. What is in a man's name? His reputation. Oh Lord our God, not just how mighty, how excellent. If your name does not excel, you are not blessed. One of the indices, the portraits of a blessed man is that you must have a blessed name. Genesis chapter 12, 2 and 3. Among the many things that were listed and proposed to Abraham was a great name. If all you have is money, you are not blessed. If all you have is education, you are not blessed enough. Among the many things that symbolize kingdom blessing in a man is a great name. I will make your name great. When you are great alone, nobody can be great through you. But when your name is great, people can leverage on that name and also become great. Get my message, redefining inheritance. I teach there on five things that qualify to be called inheritance. The Bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. And the first thing I told you that qualifies to be inheritance is your spiritual convictions. You have not blessed anybody from you, biologically or spiritually or otherwise, if you don't transfer your convictions. Number two, your name. The second thing that qualifies to be an inheritance is a transference of your name. That's why Jesus gave us his name. Today in his name, standing in his office, we can leverage on his reputation and exert dominion upon the cosmos. Number three, your relationships. That you can transfer your relationships. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? The prodigal son had money. But he didn't have other weightier things called inheritance. When he said, give me my inheritance, he was just thinking of money. The money wasted and was spent away because he did not have the mindset of his father. He did not have the relationships of his father. He did not honor the name of his father. And money alone ended him with swine. Hallelujah. Why does God do the things that he does in and through our lives? Why does God visit people mightily? Because he is love. He does it for his name's sake. And he does it as part of his commitment to birthing his glory in your life. I like this. When God says he wants your life to be a reflection of his glory, it is not mere talk. There is a commitment component to that talk. So when God says, I want your life to become an expression of my glory, all wise, glory spiritually, glory financially, are we together? Glory in every aspect of your life. He does not just speak. There are men who speak and cannot show you the commitment. I will bless you. And then after two years, you keep reminding them and they say, I've not forgotten. Perhaps they have the intention, but they do not have the wherewithal. I have taught you that integrity and ability are the two things that make a man really faithful. 
if you have integrity alone, integrity is the intention to remain true. But ability is what gives integrity credence. I can desire to help you, but not have the ability. Thankfully, God has both integrity and ability. This is the reason why we call upon him with confidence. If thou wills, thou can make my son clean. He said, I will. I have integrity. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Profound. If God has spoken, it is within his power to make it good. Genesis 21 verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. There are men who say sincerely or deceptively. And they do not have the wherewithal to make it come to pass. I'm telling you this so that you will know. That when God vows that it is your year of exceeding great rewards. If God has vowed that it is your year for rising, it is not a mere talk. The resources from heaven have been coordinated to make sure that that word does not fall to the ground. You believe that? Shout a loud believing amen. That means an individual, my God, can rise from anywhere to anywhere. You may be the least like Gideon in your father's house. And yet when these resources are coordinated, what are they? Let me list them for you. Wisdom, favor, speed, restoration, power, relationships. These are divine resources that insist and ensure that the saints do not remain small. When God speaks, it is within his power. Let me show you what this is called. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 is called all grace. And God is able to make, to coordinate all grace. All grace. What grace? Favor grace. What grace? Wisdom grace. What grace? Restoration grace. What grace? The gift of man. All grace towards you. Give it to us. So that ye, on the strength of these graces, having all sufficiency. What does it mean to be sufficient? To mean, it means to be able to rise to the occasion, never disappointing. He wants you to abound to every good work, but not without his empowerment. There are people here right now, the limitation you have that is stopping you from being a revelation of the glory of God is that there is some infirmity that Satan has planted in your body. That becomes your assignment tonight to partner with the spirit of grace that I will not go back the way I came. Listen, if you are angry enough, something always happens to men when you become angry. When you are comfortable with situations, you will be shocked that in this atmosphere we'll share the grace and leave and you will leave back disappointed. There are those who have been oppressed by all kinds of satanic, demonic manifestations. Manifestations of darkness orchestrated by the devil to destroy you, to take away dignity from your life. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are people who cannot rise. There are families that cannot excel because there are horns. Remember our scripture? Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18. Son of man, what seest thou? He says, four horns. Horns, symbols of authority. What is the assignment of these horns? The Bible says they have come. These are the horns that have kept down Judah, your praise. Kept down Israel, your promise. Kept down Jerusalem, your peace. Three things they attack. They attack your praise. They attack your promise. They attack your peace. It says, but I have sent four carpenters. Hmm. Carpenters. What does a carpenter do? Rebuild. Rebuild. Sometimes build afresh from nothing. Do you believe tonight? Everything that frustrates your being a manifestation of God's glory 
tonight must be your project so that you don't you don't waste your time here and sit down clapping and rejoicing celebrating other miracles no they've told me i have some heart palpitation and if this thing continues like that it will kill me i would die early i would not be able to become and i cannot be a blessing therefore because this is inconsistent with god's commitment as revealed in his word it becomes your project to fight the fight of faith how about poverty oh it's happening like that you better hate it and get angry don't sit down and give yourself a flimsy excuse and say it's because they don't like me make them like you there is a reason why people are hated and there is a reason why people are loved jacob have i loved and and um what's what's the other one's name is have i hated did you ever ask why There is something that can happen to men and make men love men. Jesus increased Luke 2.52 in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and men. God and men. Someone must like you somewhere. Enough to invest into your life. Enough to invest into your dreams. Did you hear what I said? Someone must like you beyond your family, beyond your failure. Everybody cannot hate you. Even the devil is not hated by everybody. There are people who love him. You are not that bad. Somebody must love you enough to invest in your life. If the devil is still loved by someone, why should you be hated by all? Say everybody doesn't like your situation is interesting there are people who have an unapologetic love for satan knowing he's satan knowing he steals knowing he kills knowing he destroys notwithstanding they still love him and they have a right by choice i've shared with you here there are many of you you are gifted but you are with the wrong audience. You have not yet gotten to env the environment that has the discernment to honor you. Joseph interpreted three people's dreams. He interpreted the dream of the wine presser. He remained in prison. They didn't have the wherewithal to help him. He interpreted the dream of the baker. He remained there. But when the king dreamed, the same gift though, the gift did not improve. It was only the audience that changed. There are some of you, you have been interpreting dreams well done, but you have exhausted that training. It's time for God to announce you. And God does not necessarily need to upgrade the gift. He just needs to bring the people who have capacity to discern what you carry and reward you. And I pray for you already. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the grace that lifts, may the grace that announces, let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon you now. Listen, announcement is a spiritual thing. Media can only help. Believe me, if that grace has not rested, you will shout around and nobody will hear you. He said, he that has an ear, let him hear. That means not everybody has that kind of ear. You can be shouting and say, I am here. I studied this. I can do this. But the realm of the spirit says we cannot hear you. And that is where the control room is. I have a great ministry. I can heal. Listen to me. I have a, I can, my family is a great family. But the realm of the spirit is not hearing. There is a hear ye him anointing. A grace that rests upon you. And even the deaf will know you are there. Can I speak it over someone? In the name of Jesus. Whatever has silenced your influence. So that your voice will not be heard. I call upon the God of my covenant. May you be heard from today. May you be heard from today. Let the ends of the earth hear you. Let the ends of the earth hear you. my assignment tonight is to threaten that which keeps you down that has vowed that your voice will not be heard john said i am the voice of one crying he was heard when jesus came he was heard one of the things they tried to do to the early apostles was to shut their voice so that they will not it's not only men businesses have voices 
ministries have voices you can be active and sincere but if that sound in the spirit is not heard your relevance will also die with you I say it again the spirit that is shutting your voice I came by the rod of a higher priesthood in the name of Jesus that silence comes to an end Hallelujah. Gifted, but nobody's seen you. Genuinely called, but it looks like you are just going around rigmaroling. Can I tell you this? Believe me, when that grace is on you, it doesn't matter even if you are in a hole, the nations will look for you there. It is true. Rest on me, oh, rest on me, oh, rest on me, the Holy Ghost power, rest on me, let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me, let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me, oh, rest on me. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Now hear me please. There are some serious prayers that we want to pray now. And whilst we pray, I'm already seeing visions of fire. When the Holy Spirit reveals himself as fire, he does not just come as a refiner. He also comes to burn everything. Everything in life is heat dependent. There is no material known to man that can survive certain levels of heat. Hallelujah. Now hear me. I taught you that there are five spiritual atmospheres and every time God introduces any of them, you must be discerning because it's time to receive. The atmosphere of prayer engenders reception. The atmosphere of worship engenders reception the atmosphere of the prophetic engenders reception you must be sensitive i want us to pray are you ready to pray this is the ministration no? as i pray who is josiah josiah i'm hearing the name josiah josiah Haraskoli kabandi grahaf kazimalakosi apash Josiah, I'm hearing the name Josiah. Every altar that has brought families down, every altar that will not allow men and families to rise by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm hearing Josiah. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse those atmospheres now. I curse those atmospheres now. I'm hearing the name Olua Kemi. Olua Kemi. This is a Yoruba name. Olua Kemi. This is what I'm hearing. Olua Kemi. We are going to pray. But salvation has come to this person 
and this family, Oluwa Kemi, who is that place? Oluwa Kemi, this is what I'm hearing in my spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. I'm hearing the name Bridget. 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 Is there someone with such a name? Bridget, run here. Bridget, salvation has come to your family. Oh, oh, oh. rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Spirit of wisdom. Who is Bridget? Bridget, where are you from? I'm going to pray for you. Shalis Kabrandi Gabariata. We're going to pray. Bridget. I'm praying for you, but the person who is shouting now is in the crowd. Bring the person out. The power of God. Just this direction. I'm seeing fire resting on someone. Please bring the person out now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please bring the person out now. I want to pray for you. I'd like you to be sensitive. We are going to pray. Bridget. I'm hearing the name Bridget. You have a daughter. Her name is Joy. You have a daughter. The name of the daughter is Joy. I'm not saying the daughter. It's not the daughter I'm calling. It's a woman who has a daughter whose name is Joy. Please, where are you? I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for those in front here. I'm seeing attacks on two of you. We are going to pray. But I'm seeing strange attacks. I curse those spirits. Right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Out of them now. In the name of Jesus. Out of them now. Oh, oh, oh. rest on me. Oh, oh, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh. I'm still seeing these attacks. Every attack on any family represented here by the fire of the Holy Ghost right now. I decree and declare by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic be delivered this moment be delivered this moment be delivered this moment be delivered this moment be delivered this moment, be delivered this moment. you have been seeing the spirit of death on your husband this is what God is revealing to me. The spirit of death. You have seen it in dreams. And this is targeted towards your husband. God wants me to pray for you before we get into prayer now. I decree and declare. I don't know who that woman is. The spirit of death. And this is targeted over your husband. That your husband will die and leave you. And with your children. And you go through all kinds of pain. And this thing wants to come as cancer. This is what I'm seeing. In the name that is above all names. And by the power that raised Christ from the dead. I command that spirit of death. Masquerading as infirmity. It dies now. It dies now. It dies now. Hallelujah. One, two... Three, four, five. Five people will shout now under the anointing. Please, I want you to bring them out. I know there are people shouting, but this is, I saw the number five. Bring them out. Tonight, God is giving you a change of story. Please bring them out. There is a reason why I ask them to come out. Your sister is a commissioner. Your sister is a commissioner. This is what your sister is a commissioner. Is there someone like that? Commissioner meaning those who aid governments. Um, commissioner, I don't know whether commissioner of what. But I'm hearing commissioner. Your sister is a commissioner. Is there someone like that? I want to pray for you very quickly. Please, if I mention your case, just hurry up so you don't waste our time. We are going to pray. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I'm praying right now for that person because I'm seeing something that looks like it's a spiritual thing, but it looks like someone eats 
and then they begin to have a bloating stomach and that's how they just pass on in the name that is above all names anyone digging a pit for you after the order of her man may they fall into their same pit I say it again anyone digging a pit for your destruction they fall into that pit they fall into that pit they fall into that pit in the name of Jesus for all of you who are in front here I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus Christ everything that is inconsistent with God's intent for your life and destiny I stretch my hands towards you now and I declare be delivered forever be delivered forever please return back to your seat we are going to pray fire is falling here now when it's time to pray in this prayer you are receiving with all your heart are you ready to pray Psalm 3 and verse 1 3 and verse 1 give my people the mic so that we'll pray 3 and verse 1 it says oh Lord how are they increased that trouble me many are they that rise up against me Psalm 71 and verse 21 we're praying someone's destiny is about to change read with me one to read thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me how many sides how many sides Joshua chapter 3 and verse 7 Joshua 3 and verse 7 read with me and the Lord said unto Joshua this day I will begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses so I will be with you are you ready to pray shout this from the depth of your heart father for your glory for your glory increase my greatness go ahead and pray Increase my greatness for your glory. Father, for your glory, increase my greatness. Take away smallness from my destiny. Increase my greatness. Someone pray. Tired of where you are, pray. Tired of where you are, pray. Father, for your glory, increase my greatness. For your glory, increase my greatness. For your glory, increase my greatness. Greatness is your heritage. Are you praying? Increase my greatness. Increase my greatness. Increase the greatness of my family for your glory. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. My greatness take away smallness from my destiny in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray my God something is happening to your spirit man I tell you there is an elevation in the spirit an elevation I'm seeing a ladder this is what I'm seeing, an elevation. You will suddenly go and see that things are changing, changing in your life. Hmm. Prayer point number two. Take it down for me. For the last one month, this prayer point has not left my spirit. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore everything.
everything that was lost restore you will restore restore everything that was lost restore everything that was stolen to pray Joel chapter 2 some of you have lost all kinds of things everything to be lost has left you you have lost opportunities you have lost relationships you have lost joy you have lost strategic resources it's time to have it back Joel 2 25 and I will restore to you the years and I will restore to you the years. God can restore time. Did you hear what I said? God can restore time. I will restore to you the years. If God cannot restore time, then he is not greater than time. If it is, he is greater and higher than the realm of time, then he must sustain the ability to restore time. Jeremiah 30 and verse 17. Please give it to us quickly. We are praying. Someone's life is changing. For I will restore health unto you. Those failing organs. Those failing body parts. You are just 20, 30. And yet they are telling you that you are losing certain things. It's time to be angry. God does not just restore time. God restores health and vitality. Psalm 41, 1 to 3. Shabaka parakatos yata. Blessed is the man that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Verse 2. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. He says, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. He says, thou will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. Shout verse 3 together. The Lord will strengthen him in the bed of languishing. And I will make all his bed in sickness. God will not allow him to die. Not allow him to deplete and famish. First Peter 5 and verse 10. I like this one. God is restoring. But the God of all grace. Who has called you to his eternal glory. He says after that ye have suffered a while. What does he do? Make you perfect. Establish you. Strengthen you. And then settle you. Say it again. Make you perfect. Establish you. Strengthen you. And then settle you. Say Father. I decree. I declare. Divine restoration. Of opportunities. Of relationships. Of resources. Of men, of men, of my joy. Of my joy. Now, now, open your mouth and pray. Restoration. 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 Karisa balagadash, kram bata lagabarakatos, rakatas kotobros, abrakata balagata fraskata balaka. Restoration. 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 Restore joy. Restore years. Restore things. Restore men. Restore resources. Shabaka Paros, Rakata Praskata Vaskabash, Rakata Praskata Palakos, Rakata Prantakabash, Abrakatos Koto Prekatelis. Cry restoration, cry restoration, cry restoration. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Job chapter 42 and verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job how many? How many? As much as he had before. The Lord turned his captivity, but he did not stop there. God restored by giving twice. Are you ready for the third prayer point? We have five in total, but we'll pray three now. And then I'll begin to minister deliverance. This is one miracle service you will not forget in a hurry. Are you ready? Prayer point number three. Genesis 21 and verse 1. It's one thing for God to speak, but it's another thing for his word to manifest speedily. Speedily. Listen. God's word can be sent, but it must arrive speedily. In the parable of the ten virgins, God himself was standing in the place of the bridegroom. It was the delay of the arrival of the bridegroom that made the oil of other virgins to finish. If the bridegroom came on time, all ten of them, they were virgins. Are we together now? It was the delay of the arrival of the bridegroom that made five to suffer loss. So when it does not arrive on time, your resources can pay for it. He says, satisfy me early with your mercy. Genesis 21 and verse 1. The Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord spoke unto Sarah. Now watch this. You would think it just happened the next day. Look at how the Bible summarizes it. But let me break this scripture down for you. The Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. This is a spiritual reality. But the manifestation of this took 25 years before it arrived. Don't you think he just said it and it happened the next day? You see, the way God talks and the way he behaves, he expects his word to have come speedily. Whatever happened in the realm of the spirit that prolonged that situation, Jesus looked at the man in John chapter 5 and said, why are you still in this condition? And he said, I have no man. And it made his tragedy become 38 years. The woman who was bent for 18 years, another had hemorrhage for 12 years. Why does the Bible attach numbers to these tragedies? The Bible would have just said a certain man was sick. Abraham and Sarah were barren, trusting God. The man at the gate, he had been there a long time. But the Bible is so meticulous, it attaches numbers. Notice when Jesus came, he did not honor the longevity of their pain. He made them know that for all of them, a possibility existed to have received the miracle earlier. Are you ready to pray? Let me give you one more scripture. This one we are going to pray. Because there are some of you, you can't wait again till December. No. The Bible said, this is the day. Not this is the week. Not this is the month. There are days, there are weeks, there are months, there are years. Whichever one your faith defines is what becomes your reality. If your faith is for years, save Johnny. If your faith is for months, save Johnny. He said, give us this day. Give us when? One more time. So God can give men this day. There are times they will say, after five months, on the sixth month of the seventh year, the word of the Lord came. But Jesus himself said, when you pray, remind the Father that it's within his power to give you this day. Give me this, this day. Give me liftings this day. Open a door for me this day. Are you ready to pray? Joshua chapter 21 and verse 45. Give us amplified. We are still praying. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He saved us. I'm charging your faith as we get into this place of prayer. I know him. My God is able to do 
Joshua 21 45 read with me ready one to read there failed no part of any good thing which the Lord had promised to the house of Israel all came to pass how many how many are you ready to pray say father I declare a speedy manifestation of every prophetic word that is upon my life open your mouth and cry I declare speedy manifestation of every prophetic word I declare someone pray I declare a speedy manifestation of every prophetic word Baruska le brega de bes, skopra to varetuska di balas. Speedy manifestation, speedy manifestation. You have spoken. Let it come to pass today. You have spoken. Let it come to pass now. You have spoken. Let it come to pass now. You have spoken. Let it come to pass now. Sapakatos, rakata braskata velakatos. Let it come to pass now. Let it come to pass now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, my God, I'm tempted to give you the next one. Just endure, let me give you the next one. Huh? Are you ready for the next one? John 14, 11. I have to give you the next one. This is why you came. He said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And if that revelation is what cannot make you believe, he said, believe me for the sake of the results. Believe me for the work's sake. Results can make men believe God and believe you. Did you hear what I said? Results can make men believe God and believe you. We read John 15, 8 earlier on. Herein is my Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Not just fruit, much fruit. Great results. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. Hallelujah. Ordained you to go and bear fruit, 15, 16, and that your fruit should remain. Let me tell you the truth. Do not downplay results in this life. I know that you are here because you love Jesus, but you are also here because you have seen results. Results at the end of any and every argument you can argue all you can but not in the presence of results hallelujah what is a prayer father give evidence to my christian experience did you hear what i said give evidence i'm tired of running around telling people i'm a christian i'm tired of telling people i love you without proof i'm tired of telling people i'm serving you without proof i'm tired of telling people that i'm living for you 
Father, give evidence to my Christian experience. Give evidence to my loving you. Give evidence to my serving you. Give evidence to my trusting you. Are you ready? Say, Father. In this season, give evidence to my Christian experience. Results. Genuine results. Open your mouth and pray. Bring me into a realm of authentic results. Give evidence. Give evidence. Are you praying? All the overflows, pray. Give evidence to my serving you. Give evidence to my loving you. Give evidence to my live, my living for you. Sabras kabarakatos, krata kabarakata fras kabalakatos. deliverance to people I don't have the time but perhaps next week I will teach you something very powerful you see the major challenge with believers in the body of Christ is we do not know that for results to happen in the earth please listen there are three things three conditions that need to be satisfied number one is called the finished work of Christ that reality has been settled in Christ. Number two is the effective appropriation of that which is finished in Christ. Engaging it through faith. Are we together? And then number three, the results manifest. The major challenge with believers is that we think just because realities are finished in Christ, it automatically means the earth eternally has an instruction to give crops and yet there is still hunger on earth why because that prophetic word there has to be an appropriation system the name of the appropriation system is sowing every time you sow you are partnering with prophecy it is prophetic instruction to the earth plus the farmer's responsibility that is equal harvest am i right on that you even in a desert the land was still instructed to produce under a certain kind of condition that is why in israel a desert land they have food for the next 15 years in a desert land so you read in scriptures by his stripes i am healed that is a prophetic reality from god's standpoint you read from scripture no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick the Bible would teach us that we have been called out of every tribe and tongue and nation. These things are not a lie. They are realities as finished in Christ. But you must understand the appropriation system of the spirit. That means the system of converting prophecy to make it manifest. The Bible says the word became flesh. The word became flesh. The healing word became flesh. 
the prospering word became flesh the lifting word became flesh then it dwelt among men it is only when it became flesh that it dwelt among men and we beheld his glory we couldn't see the glory when it was in the realm of the spirit the bible says from the foundations of the earth the lamb was already slain but that reality could not save any man people still died and went to hades until jesus came in reality and partnered with prophecy he says lo i come as it is written in the volume of the book are we together when he partnered with prophecy and actually died like the prophet said he would die it was that experience in partnership with prophecy that produced redemption so when we minister deliverance and you see people who came believing in God manifesting and God is releasing people it is not negating what Christ has done it is en engaging the appropriation system the reason why the demons will leave is because victory has been wrought already in Christ I have taught you that the concept of deliverance and warfare for the believer is not engaging to see who wins is enforcing the victory that is finished already but making it manifest here and now the fact that believers still get sick should tell you that it is possible for an individual to still be under an influence of demons because the same package is what delivered everything it delivered victory over sin victory over sickness victory over satan victory over the grave victory over a defeated life they all came in one package the fact that believers can still be poor and yet you are not ashamed you will teach you principles and you will rise a believer can be sick and he can be ministered to supernaturally or medically you should not be surprised that a believer may not be possessed but can be greatly influenced by spirits and i've taught you here that there are three conditions by which spirits engage the saints one is called disobedience two is called ignorance three is called covenants and covenants are transgenerational in their approach that means you don't have to be there and agree when it was enacted but you will still be a victim who sinned that this man was born blind him or his father this is Jesus's student asking him a question today in Israel because they are the physical descent of Abraham there are many of them that do not acknowledge Jesus as Messiah yet they still prosper because he said in thy in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed and they came out as a physical descent of abraham yet in their rebellion they would look at god and curse him to his face yet because he cannot act against his word they remain a people blessed and blessed forever these are rules of engagement you need to understand so don't sit down saying I, I, I don't believe I can you are seeing the result evidences of satanic manipulations it is not negating your Christian experience you are partnering with prophecy to establish it so that once and for all there is victory when victory manifests everything will show that you are a winner medicine will show you are a winner your bank account will show you are a winner are we together now I want to pray for you for as long as I live, I become by the grace of God an agent of appropriating that which is finished in Christ. That for the sake of one person here who has been oppressed by spirits. Can I tell you this? In this walk you see, by the privilege of God's grace, I have seen all kinds of oppressions in the life of people. I can tell you firsthand many of you here ladies and gentlemen you are standing here not just for yourself but you are standing for your families I've seen people who left and went abroad but because they did not settle these things with understanding and engaging by faith they remain like beggars abroad they would give them a job and mysteriously the person will say I don't like you you would think it's just some racist thing but even if you come back home it's still the same thing how about families where women are the men and men are the women you've seen those kinds of families and they can be genuine Christians but men in those families never feed their wives they only marry to be beggars and remain beggars you will see a woman paying school fees building the house doing everything and the man is there 
Ricky will sincerely carry his CV till his children become teenagers. He's not gotten one job after graduation. I told you, even Satan is not everybody that hates him. Hallelujah. There are people who never hold money and it stays in their hand. There is a spirit and a curse upon the works of their hands. Give them one billion, they will be smiling. Ask them after one year, where did it go to? They will say, something happened. I borrowed this one, he ran away. This one happened and all of that. Come on now. There are people who don't experience delay, but they experience what we call um, their pace with respect to time is too slow. They build one house in 10 years. They use 10 years to finish school. Are we together now? 10 years to finish school. The child goes to school and he will repeat one class five times. Even though it's an intelligent, it's a curse. It's a curse. A curse from the pit of hell, I tell you. There are people who build but never eat. Just when they're about to eat, they die or something happens to them. I have seen it many times. That includes pastors. They raise people. The moment the people are established and it's the time to bless them, something mysteriously happens and takes them out of their life. I've seen business people like that. There are people here who are part of the rising of many people, but till today they are still paupers and beggars. Spirits for you. Hallelujah. Do you believe what you're hearing? Yes. I've seen people like that. Beautiful lady, wonderful lady, but the day a gentleman looks at you and says, I want to go and see your father. That gentleman will lose his job in one week, lose his sanity, lose every opportunity. And they'll just tell him, run away from this family. There's a spirit in this family. You see, this is what sometimes the prophetic ministry erroneously interprets. As men and women being witches and wizards. They may not be witches and wizards. But for sure, there are spiritual operations within those families that with intelligence, they need to be delivered from. Hallelujah. I know people as a man of God. I desire to bless them. I remember looking at them and said, I will bless them mysteriously in a way I cannot understand. I'm not that forgetful, but I forgot to bless them. Me, oh, a man of God. And the person is saying, what kind of spirit is this? What is pursuing you determines how you run. Hello? Hmm? It's not the same thing that is pursuing everybody. Oh. Others who, they've paid the price for you. Some, you are the first person to rise in your family. There is no mention of the word honor or dignity in your family. There's no such thing. Now, not to get you, please don't feel offended. But there are people in families who never marry until they get pregnant outside. That's the condition. For as long as you say, I want to get married first. No, that spirit will not let you be. I know people who spend 15 years abroad and return back to Nigeria. And even the key to a car, they could not have. They called all their classmates and their classmates are now exalted. And they are not comparison. What is it that stops the glory of God from manifesting? How about families that always kill those who become the lifters in those families? Have you seen it happen? That just when someone just, I just got a job. I just got an opportunity. My stomach, my head, and the person is dead. I came angry tonight in my spirit. Because someone... I, by the privilege of God's grace, sir, I've had the honor of taking care of a lot of families. I have seen 25-year-old widows with four, five children. How long did the man live before dying? Absolutely nothing. And they leave those people 25, 28, four, five children. Hallelujah. How about your destiny helpers forgetting you? You watch them on TV making pledges to people and yet you say uncle just to remind you that i'm still here say, okay you i will remember immediately once it is your own they forget are you ready for the book of remembrance to be open just when 
they are dropping your CV on a man's table. Someone will come and use your CV to wrap food with it. They are considering yours. They say, please pass me a piece of paper and it's your CV they carry and wrap food with it. And you sit down and you are shouting thinking your CV is in the office whereas it's in the bin somewhere. He said, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Do you know why? He said, lest he dips his hand in iniquity. I've seen people who love God. They are not lazy, but they live their lives begging. They never get to a point where they can live a decent life. No. They beg. Their wives join them begging. Their children join them begging. Their grandchildren join them begging. Their entire lineage lives by begging. Shout no way. No way. One more time. Shout no way. Whatever you permit, whatever you tolerate remains in your life. I'm saying this because everything that is not of God, he must let you go. Now, there are, there are families where the parents and the elderly people remain, but the children die leaving the parents. You see a family full of old people with no young man to help them. He said, I write these things to you fathers. I write these things to you young men. I write these things to you children. This is what makes a complete generation. There must be elders. There must be young men. There must be children. No generation is safe without elders. No generation is safe without young men. No generation is safe without children. When Satan wants to suspend continuity, he looks for one of these three. If he kills the elders, the young men will become foolish young men because no counsel. When he kills the young men, there will be no continuity because the elders will pass on one day and the children will not have a way to be trained well. When he kills the children, you will now see the spirit that was in Pharaoh and he was negotiating the exodus of God's people. Let some go and let some stay. And Moses said, you are joking, all of us, our wives, our children. In this place tonight, there are elders. In this place tonight, there are young men. In this place tonight, there are children. In fact, in this place tonight, there are babies. Our commission tonight is everybody must be free. There is nobody that is too young to be free. And there is nobody that is too old to be delivered. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. Every first time down my destiny, you must let me go now. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now very quickly I'm about to minister the deliverance power of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kete katos. Kete branda kata pakotos koto breke teke nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.